by night, but not the way I'd imagined. My lecture at the American University had been followed by an unexpected invitation to a crime scene. Professor Langdon, thank you for coming. I am Captain Bezu Fash. Do you know this man? Chaksonier, the curator of the Louvre. I was supposed to meet him tonight after my speech. Follow me. It seems Monsieur Sommier put up quite a fight. <laughs> So nearly got away. You should not have run, Monsieur Sonnier. Now, tell me where it is. Please, I beg you. Where is it? All right, all right, I will tell you. The bars were no defense. I believe you. The others told me the same. saw the photograph, so this should be of no surprise. Feel free to examine the body, Mr. Langdon. It's a pentacle, one of the oldest symbols on Earth, used over 4,000 years before Christ. Devil worship. No, the pentacle is a pre-Christian symbol that relates to nature worship. The ancients envisioned their world in two halves, masculine and feminine. This pentacle is representative of the female half of all things, a concept religious historians call the sacred feminine or divine goddess. Sonnier, of all people, would know this. Sonnier drew a goddess symbol on his stomach? Interesting. The position of his feet reinforces the reference to the pentacle and the sacred feminine. I beg your pardon? Replication. Repeating a symbol is the simplest way to strengthen its meaning. Jacques Sonnier positioned himself in the shape of a five-pointed star. <laughs> Interesting analysis. He stripped himself naked, folded his clothes, and put them away from himself? Pardon? It's rather meticulous for a dying man. I think he was trying to show us that everything he did had a purpose. Even his nudity may have meaning. Uh, what do you think about the use of his own blood as ink? Obviously, he had nothing else to write with. Actually, I believe he used blood such that the police would follow certain forensic procedures. I'm sorry? Look at his left hand. 
He's clutching a large felt tip marker. It smells like alcohol. Sonnier was holding it when we found him. As I told you, we have touched nothing. Are you familiar with this kind of light? As you may know, police use black light illumination to search crime scenes for blood and other forensic evidence. So you can imagine our surprise. What the hell does this mean? That, monsieur, is precisely the question you are here to answer. Part of it looks like a numeric cipher. Yes, our cryptographers are already working on it. We believe these numbers may be the key to who killed him. Uh, but the text appears to be an accusation of some sort. Wouldn't you agree? An accusation against his murder makes sense, I suppose. Sonnier was a Frenchman. Uh, he lived in Paris. And yet he chose to write this message... In English? Precisement, Monsieur Langdon. I have seen a lot of death in my work, and let me tell you something. When a man is murdered by another man, I do not believe his final thoughts are to write an obscure spiritual statement that no one will understand. I believe he is thinking of one thing only. La vengeance. I believe Sonnier wrote this note to tell us who to kill But that makes no sense whatsoever. You told me Sonier was attacked by someone he had apparently invited in. Considering the circumstances, I would assume that if Sonier wanted to tell you who killed him, he would have written down somebody's name. Precisement, precisement. Capitaine. Oh, uh, one moment, please. Uh, oui? Uh, Capitaine, un agent de département de cryptographie est arrivé. Unacceptable, I made it very clear. Captain. Please excuse the interruption, but... Ce n'est pas le moment! I have deciphered the numeric code, but before I explain, I have an urgent message for Mr. Langdon. For Mr. Langdon? The U.S. Embassy asked that you phone in as soon as possible. While I explain the code to Captain Fash, you need to make this call. Thank you. Where can I find a phone? This line is secure. You may use it. This is a beautiful place. Bonjour, vous êtes bien chez Sophie Neveu. Je suis absent pour le moment, mais... I'm sorry, Miss Neveu. I think you may have given me the wrong... No, that is the right number. It's the three-digit code on the paper I gave you. But... The Embassy has an automated message system. You have to dial an access code to pick up your messages. She handed me the a note. Numbers that Sonier wrote I should look at that. Numérique. Ah, this is the number I'm supposed to call. It is the Fibonacci sequence, a progression in which each term is equal to the sum of the two preceding terms. Captain, considering what you have at stake here tonight, I thought you might appreciate knowing that Jacques Sonnier might be playing games with you. Apparently not. I will inform the Director of Cryptography you no longer need our services. Is everything all right? An accident. A friend. I'll need to fly home first thing in the morning. Who would you like to sit down? Actually, I think I'd like to use the restroom. The restrooms are at the end of the Grand Gallery. Shall I accompany you? Not necessary. I think I'd like a few minutes alone. I must return to Monsieur Sonnier's office for a moment. Please come find me directly when you are finished in La Toilette. There is more we need to discuss. Thank God you came. We don't have much time. I wanted to warn you, Monsieur Langdon, you are sous surveillance cachée. 
under a guarded observation. But why? Because Fascist primary suspect in this murder is you. Look in your jacket pocket. You will find proof they are tracking you. Just look. What is this? It's a GPS tracking dot. It continuously transmits its location to a global positioning system satellite that the DCPJ can monitor. We use them to monitor people's locations. It's accurate within two feet anywhere on the globe. They have you on an electronic leash in case you decide to run. In fact, they hope you do run, because it would make their case much stronger. Why would I run? I'm innocent. Do you recall the three lines of text that Sonia wrote on the floor? What you saw was not the entire message. This is a photo of the complete message. Why would Sonia write this? Was he trying to frame me? No. He wrote it for me. The numbered code is meaningless. Sonia wrote it to make sure the investigation included cryptographers, ensuring that I would know as soon as possible what had happened to him. Why you specifically? How do you know it wasn't for some other cryptographer? P.S. is the nickname he called me when I lived with him. It stood for Princess Sophie. We had a falling out ten years ago. Jacques Saunier. He, uh, he was my grandfather. Where's Langdon? Uh, still in the men's room, sir. We are seeing small movements, so the GPS dot is obviously still on him. Perhaps he feels ill. If he had found the dot, he would have removed it and tried to run. Hmm. Fine. What should I do? Fash will be taking you into custody any minute. I can get you out of here, but we need to act now. You want me to run? It's the smartest thing you could do. If you stay, you will spend weeks in a French jail. But if you get to your embassy, then your government can protect you while I prove you had nothing to do with this murder. Forget it. You need to tell Fash that the message on the floor was for you, and that my name is not there as an accusation. Fash is convinced you are guilty. The only way to get you out is with a distraction. The GPS tracking dot? We need them to think you are running. If we can throw it out the window onto one of the cars going by, I bet a lot of the police would clear out. But the tracking dot does not weigh much more than a gram. See if you can find something to attach it to that would make it heavier. I can use this. Stop. That will work. Come, help me open this window. Alarm! Grand Galerie! Toilette, messieurs! Where's Langdon? Still in the men's room. He must have broken the window. I knew it! He is trying to escape. Quick, Robert! Help me get this window open. Hurry, Robert! Hurry, Robert! <laughs> Good. Now put the GPS tracking dot inside this soap and throw it out the window. Finally. Draconian Devil. 
O Lane Saint. The scrambled Fibonacci sequence is a clue. The numbers are a hint as to how to decipher the rest of the message. He wrote the sequence out of order to tell us to apply the same concept to the text. O Draconian Devil, O Lane Saint. Those lines mean nothing. They are simply letters written out of order. You think this message is an anagram? Like a world jumble from a newspaper? Your grandfather's meaning was right in front of us all along, and he left us more than enough clues to see it. Let me see that photo. The Mona Lisa, Leonardo da Vinci. I can't imagine how your grandfather created such intricate anagrams in the minutes before he died. My grandfather probably created these anagrams long ago. What is important is that he wanted me to see something at the painting. You're going to the Mona Lisa? Now? I am not the murder suspect. I'll take my chances. I need to understand what my grandfather was trying to tell me. What about the embassy? The signs will lead you to a security turnstile. Mine is the car in the employee lot. Do you know how to get to the embassy? Whatever my grandfather was trying to tell me, I don't think he wanted anyone else to find it. As strange as it may sound, I think he wants me to get to the Mona Lisa before anyone else does. I'll come. No! We don't know how long the Grand Gallery will stay empty. You have to go now. I will see you at the embassy, Monsieur Langdon. Père, why did you do this to yourself? What was so important that you needed me to see? <laughs> you always did like to play world games with me when I was little. <sighs> there is no time for goodbyes right now. I need to know what Grandpère was trying to tell me. I cannot reminisce for much longer. He would want me to follow the trail he left. Beautiful place. Hmm. Ah, Agent Levu. Did you hear that Robert Langdon escaped? Flash is quite furious. Any excuse to get away from the office, eh? <laughs> Grandpère pulled down the painting of the Caravaggio to set off the alarms and bring down the gates, but I don't think he left any clues for me here. There is something I need to see in there. Oh, uh, sorry, Agent Nevu. Our orders are clear. No one is allowed through. Is there any evidence in there? Well, not that we know of. Why? Oh, never mind. Whatever message Grandpère hid in there is probably not visible to the naked eye. Perhaps he used the pen he was holding to write a clue. I need to find a UV light. If the officer sees me, he will not let me pass. I must sneak by him. Hmm. So, do you think Langdon killed the curator? I don't know. So I'll pretend he was a guy. Hmm. Well, maybe so wrapped up in their theories that if anyone tries to come to them, they see them. So, you think Langdon killed Jacques Sonnier over an academic disagreement? It doesn't seem unreasonable. Well, these two men have killed in the name of theories and theologies. You think one person killing another over something that isn't necessarily true is reasonable? Thank you. 
So far, so good. I have to knock out that officer to get to the evidence cap. This should be useful. Uh, this could be useful to knock someone out. Judge this! There you are. Robert, I told you to get out of here. If Fash... Where were you? I had to get the black light. If my grandfather left me a message, I thought they told you to leave. Why did Senor write my name on the floor? P.S. Find Robert Langdon. The letters P.S. may mean Princess Sophie, but do they mean anything else to you? Anything at all? Yes. I saw the initials P.S. once, when I was very young. Sophie. This is crucial. Can you tell me if the initials appeared with a symbol? A fleur-de-lis? How could you possibly know that? I'm fairly certain your grandfather was a member of the secret society. The fleur-de-lis combined with the initials PS, that is the Brotherhood's official coat of arms. They call themselves the Priory of Sion. The Priory's membership has included some of history's most cultured individuals. Men like Botticelli, Sir Isaac Newton, Victor Hugo, and more importantly, Leonardo da Vinci. The identities of living Priory members are kept extremely secret, but the P.S. and fleur de -lis that you saw as a child would make sense if tonight were Priory related. There is a lot we need to discuss, but I cannot afford to let them capture you, Robert. Sonia obviously brought us together for a reason. I'm staying until we figure this out. Fine, then help me. My grandfather wanted us to see this painting for a reason. There must be a message hidden here. Sir. It smells like alcohol. Where have I smelled that before? There must be something I am missing. What is this? They look like random symbols. Nothing my grandfather ever did was random. Hmm. Now that you mention it, the arrangement of these symbols seems to indicate word groupings. Perhaps I should try something else. What is this? They look like random symbols. Nothing my grandfather ever did was random. Now that you mention it, the arrangement of these symbols seems to indicate word groupings. An encrypted substitution cipher. Bacchus and Uriel? Bacchus is the god of wine, and Uriel is an angel, if I'm not mistaken. There is a painting of Bacchus in the Grand Gallery, and Uriel is in Da Vinci's Madonna of the Rocks, which should be in there too. Let's go! Robert Langdon, you are under arrest! Wait, wait! Robert is innocent. He did not murder Sonier. Asian Navu, innocent or not, I have direct orders to arrest Robert Langdon on sight. I'm sorry. 
but I can't go to jail until I help Sophie find the real murderer. You are working together? Robert, look out! Ah, I need to get a different shift. <laughs> Well, I don't see anything special. Everyone seems to be pointing at something, though. Bacchus points to the right, and Uriel points to the left. In between them, we have John the Baptist, and he's pointing up. There's something up there, on the painting above John the Baptist. Give me a boost. Maybe I can reach it. <gasps> it's Compere's ring! The fleur-de-lis is a symbol of purity, a common reference to the Virgin Mary. But why hide it in the first place? Why not just keep it on? He was probably worried the police might take it as evidence. But why? He wanted us to find it. Is there an inscription on the ring? A clue? No, nothing. This is my grandfather's office. Maybe we can find a clue here. They are dead. Please pick up. This is Sister Santrina Sesopis. They are all dead. The floor has been broken. The other three are dead. Please answer. 
Where are you? Ah! Your fate was sealed the moment you stood against Manu's day. That woman is in trouble. We have to go to Sanso Peace and help her. She knew my grandfather as well, but I don't think he wanted me to go there. None of the clues point to her. She's in danger, Sophie. Once we find a way out of here, I have to go help her. Robert, take a look at this. It's research on where all the fleurs de lis are in the Louvre. Interesting. It might be another clue to Sonia's involvement with the Priory of Sion. Or perhaps the Priory's involvement with the Louvre. This night has been moved recently. The dust is disturbed around the edges. I think Grandfather moved it so the lens would point us towards something. circled his office? No. Look closer. It is the room next door. The restoration room. There is a vent up above. If you boost me up to it, maybe I can get to the other side. I think we need to search around some more. Maybe we can find a clue here. I cannot make out what the painting is supposed to depict. Maybe we can remove the dirt. Chemistry isn't my strong suit. Me neither. What do you think this table is used for?
instructions for creating a cleaning solution. If I can make the solution, I can probably clean up that painting. Enzyme should clean the painting. Samothrace. That's here in the Louvre. But why would Sonier want us to go there? I am sure we are missing something. I do not think we have explored every possibility yet. I've never heard Fash so angry before. There will be cops all over the place. We need to stay out of sight. should come in useful. Could be chasing rioters. Have it your way. Victory of Samothrace, often called Nike of Samothrace since Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. It says here that they discovered it on the island of Samothrace in 1863, but the statue itself dates back to 288 BC when a Macedonian general Demetrius donated it in celebration of his naval victory at Cyprus.
This panel with the fleur-de-lis has a circular hole in the center, almost as if something was removed. Well done. I remember this from my childhood when I would stay at my grandfather's chateau. He must want us to go to his home for Mocluse. This looks useful. Langdon is probably halfway to America by now. Fash does not seem to think so. Bah, Fash. What does he know? I would not say such things if I were you. Mm. He has no respect for us. Look where we are patrolling, there is nothing here. Fash would not have us patrol an area for no reason. You just need to keep your eyes open. The killer is obviously long gone. I should be inspector. I never would have let him get away in the first place. If you were an inspector, after force would quit from your incessant whining. Bah! Where is the keystone? I say again, hitherto shalt thou come, but no farther. Then pray, sister. Grandfather wanted us to go to his mansion. All the clues point to there. I understand. But you heard the message from Sister Sandry. I have to help her. Then we will have to split up for now. I'll pick you up a sense of peace. Robert, be careful. You too. God. What 
happened here. Well, whatever happened, it seems to have occurred right around midnight. Whoever did this must be incredibly strong, not to mention incredibly angry. Someone's in trouble. Are you all right? Who was that? So many strange things have happened tonight. I do not know who to trust anymore. So, I, I must ask you first, who are you and why are you here? My name is Robert, and I'm a, a friend of Jacques Sonier. Sister Sandrine left a worrisome message on Sonier's answering machine, so I came to see if I could help. I am afraid that you are too late. Sister Sandrine is dead. Given the state of things, I imagine she was murdered. Yes, that furious man with the red eyes and pale skin. He wanted something, but Sister Sandrine could not or would not give it to him. He killed her in a fit of rage and tore the place apart. But he left just as angry, so I do not think he found what he was looking for. And that monk who attacked you? They came afterward, and they took some items of value and the candlestick that he used to kill Sister Sandrine. I think... I think they were trying to hide what happened. Then they would need to silence you as well. Yes. And now you. Good point. Did Sister Sandrine mention anything to you about this? No. But she did do some very strange things earlier this night. She is usually a very open and warm person. But she was acting unusually secretive. What did you see? She went to pray at the Stations of the Cross, which is a regular occurrence here, but it was not in the proper order, which is very strange. Then she went down into the crypt, and I have never seen anyone go down there before. Mainly because it is always sealed. I looked around, but I could not find the way to open it. Did you notice anything else? Anything at all? Well, I did not think much of it, but she was also carrying around a flask of oil. That is all I can think of. I see. Thank you, Sister, uh... Margarita. Sister Margarita is my name. I'm gonna see if I can find out what Sister Sandrine was doing. I may need your help later, Sister Margarita. Is there a safe place you can hide here? My room is next door. The lock is sturdy. Knock when you need help, and I will assist if I can. Oh, and if you hear the Latin chants, be wary. The monks are nearby. It's the monk I knocked unconscious. He's wearing some sort of outfit, but all the cloth is tightly bound. That might be to stop the cloth from rustling when he's moving. This should come in useful. There's a note in her hand. Four phone numbers. And there's a fleur-de-lis symbol on it. Sister Sandrine must have been calling members of the Priory of Sion when she was attacked. Ah, I thought so. That's Jacques Sonnier's number at the Louvre. More proof that Sonnier was a member of the Priory. Poor Sister Sandrine. It looks like someone hit her with a heavy object. What kind of monster would do this? Why? She seems to be reaching out towards something. Something under her bed? the tiles to form a word.
Matthew 7:14. It's obviously a passage from the Bible, but the numbers are bold. Maybe they have a double meaning. There's a priory symbol on this armoire, but it's locked. I need to open it. There may be some clues to Sister Sandrine's involvement with Sonier in the priory. Sister Marguerite mentioned that Sister Sandrine was carrying lamp oil with her before she died. This could be important. How could these not be useful? Robert. Oh, God. I, I just remembered that Sister Sandrine was carrying around two statues. They might be related to what she was doing tonight. I'll see if I can figure it out. Thank you. More monks. I think they're looking for something. I just hope it's not me and Sister Marguerite. CHAP symbol system. The French used this in the late 18th century to telegraph messages from one town to the next. Creepy monks are everywhere. I need to be careful. This must go down into the crypt below St. Sulpice. There's a chapter marked here. There were two eclipses in 1745. One was on October 4th, and the other on April 11th. According to this book, the 11th of April would also have been the night of a full moon, which was said to be when Jesus was resurrected. 
That's why Easter is celebrated the Sunday closest to the night of a full moon. This looks like a modified form of Latin, kind of like Old English. It mentions a summer eclipse in the year 1745. statue of Jesus carrying the cross.
This looks useful. It's set to 12 o'clock and doesn't seem to be moving forward. I wonder if it was broken recently or just never worked. Or maybe it isn't used for telling time at all. This was too well hidden to not be important. for. There's a notch on this shelf. This station represents when Jesus was condemned to die by Pilate. Pilate called out, Behold your king. It still amazes me that people don't know that Jesus was condemned to die because he threatened the power of the Caesar. He was a descendant of Solomon, which meant that he rightfully could have claimed power as king of the Jews. That certainly stirred up the Romans. This depicts Jesus carrying the cross he was to be crucified on. It's made of a sturdy and most likely heavy wood in the shape of a T. This was known as the Tau Cross, and much later, St. Anthony's Cross. The traditional Latin cross that most pictures depict Christ carrying didn't become prevalent until the third century. This station shows when Jesus first fell while being forced to carry the crucifixion cross to Golgotha. Some people don't know that Jesus was actually tortured before his crucifixion as well. They whipped him within an inch of his life using a scourge or lead-weighted whip. I doubt anyone could stand after that kind of abuse. This station depicts Jesus meeting his mother, Mary, or the Virgin Mary as she is better known, on his way to Golgotha. With the cross being too heavy for Jesus to continue, the Roman centurions pick Simon of Cyrene from the crowd to carry it. He's named in several of the Gospels, so it seems likely to be true. Though there's no background history for Simon before or after the events of the crucifixion, other than that he had two sons, Alexander and Rufus.
This isn't mentioned in the Gospels, but it's from the apocryphal writings. Veronica was someone who said Jesus cured her blood disorder. She came to his trial to claim Jesus was innocent. When Jesus walks by her, she wipes some of the spit and blood from his face, and it said his image was left on the cloth she used. One of the very few acts of kindness he experienced during his crucifixion. Here, Jesus falls again. At this point, he was not carrying the cross anymore as the Roman centurions had given it to Simon of Cyrene, but he had been whipped nearly to death. Here, the women of Jerusalem lament for Jesus. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus makes an odd prophecy where he tells the women not to weep for him, but for themselves and their children. For the days are coming when those who never had kids will think they are blessed. Many tried to attribute this to later plagues, but it seems more likely to me that if I were about to die, my outlook on life would also be pretty bleak. Jesus falls for the third time in this depiction. Once they got to the place of the skull, Golgotha, they stripped Jesus naked, the final humiliation. They even gambled on who would get his undergarment. The actual nailing to the cross takes place at the 11th station. I often wonder when I hear cases of stigmata, why people bleed through their hands. It was scientifically proven that in order to be able to hang from the cross, the nails are put through the wrists between the bones of your forearm. Nails through the hands simply wouldn't hold. Someone smashed through the floor here and probably found this stone. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all tell of Jesus' death on the cross. They also agree that Jesus called out, God, God, why have you forsaken me. It's obvious to me that someone calling this out is not a god, but it's also irrelevant. Jesus was a good man and he died because of politics, not because he did anyone harm. They took Jesus' dead body down from the Tau cross and presented it to Mary. Both the Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene were present there, and that's all that we can really know. Scholars to this day still debate who the body was given to. The burial of Jesus is covered in the Gospels, but only Mark and Matthew mention that both Mary his mother and Mary Magdalene were there. It's funny how the Bible is written from so many contradicting points of view, yet people still believe it to be true, word for word.
see if there are any clues in here.
that's it. So that's where Sister Sandrine went in secret tonight. Now I just need to find out why. here is actually the original church of San Sulpice. When it fell into disuse, it ended up under layers of dirt. They built the new church on top of it. This could be handy. Ah, these oil lamps were used to tell stories centuries ago. You could insert different panels into them to project an image on the wall. I knew it would work. Now I can light this lamp. Finally! It looks like the beginning of a message. If I light all the lamps, maybe I can decipher it. That did it. Good. Jerusalem. I wonder what this is for. These buttons on the wall have familiar symbols on them. I wonder if there's a pattern. of Priory Grand Masters up to this very year. And here's Jacques Sonnier. It, it all makes sense now. He wasn't just a member of the Priory of Sion. He was the Grand Master, and in his dying moments he had to pass on the secrets of the Priory or lose them forever. Whoever killed Sonier wanted to know those secrets, and Sonier sent them here to throw them off.
the clues that Sophie are following are taking her right into harm's way. The kind of ingenious zealot that could find and kill the Priory elite will certainly be able to find her as well. The monks must have followed me in here. I should stay out of sight. monks are everywhere now. I don't think I can get out the front door anymore. Sister Marguerite probably isn't safe either. I should go and check on her. Sister Sandrine was doing, but it's too dangerous for us to stay here now. Maybe, maybe I should call the police. You didn't call the police yet? I guess that's good for me. I was in such a panic, I didn't know what to do. It's all right. With everything that's happened tonight, I can understand. I need to call my friend first, but then you should call the police. I'll wait with you until they arrive, but then I need to go. What I've discovered here, well, it will mean a lot to her. Grandpère wanted me to find something very important here. But he also wanted to keep it secret from everyone but me and Robert. I remember an underground grotto hidden in a garden maze from when I was very young. I can only imagine that his secrets would be best guarded down there.
These must be the dog's food bowls. Sal Piero and Catalina. Those were Da Vinci's parents. I guess if the dogs had a pup, grandfather would have named it Leonardo. There must be something I'm missing. Trained you well. Palma hechisto utabas. Go hide in a coming filthy murderer. This should be useful. Dominus Bobisco. What's this? Do not make me hurt you. be the Fibonacci sequence. This key back to Grand Pale after the incident. I suppose he knew I would come back someday. I only wish it had been sooner. Ah, I think this turns the bridge. Find a way into the garden. That's where Grandfather would go when he went into the underground grotto.
Aeneas, the founder of Roman culture. His story is told in Virgil's book, The Aeneid. Compeo told me that even though he was the son of Venus, he was not a god himself. The mantle on this fireplace is missing something. It fits! Wait. There's more to this. The pieces rotate a certain way, but I cannot remember how. Roman goddess Venus. Grandfather told me she was the epitome of love and sexual desire. She had many lovers and many sons. Jupiter was her father, Vulcan her husband, and Mars was her lover. Cupid was her son, born a god, while Aeneas was her mortal child. But it was Aeneas who founded the Roman Empire. Cupid was the god of love, and one of Venus' sons. He is often depicted with a blindfold, which is why people say that love is blind. Nidaba was the Sumerian goddess of learning, writing, and accounting. At the beginning of every new year, she would inscribe the events that took place at the judgment of humankind. Tiamat, the serpent goddess of the abyssal waters. When time began, the Babylonians believed there were only Tiamat and Abzu. When Tiamat was slain, her body was cleaved in half. One part formed the sky, and the other, the earth. Her dying tears formed the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Beletili, the Sumerian goddess of the womb. The other gods begged her to create mankind so that there would be someone to till the soils and dig canals. She created men by shaping clay mixed with saliva and the blood of the undergod Aulu, who was slain for this purpose. And then she created women so that they could continue to bear men. Isis, the Egyptian goddess of rebirth, healing, and love. When her husband Osiris was cut to pieces by Set, Isis retrieved the pieces, reassembled him, and nursed him back to health. It was Isis who placed the sun god Ra in the sky and introduced the people to agriculture, law, and medicine. The door will not open for some reason. Yes! is related to the stained glass depictions of the goddesses.
far so good. This must be Vulcan, the god of fire and the forge. He was Venus's husband. Jupiter was the king of the gods. The Romans worshipped him as Jupiter Optimus Maximus, which means all good and all powerful. He was Venus's father. Alma exigió Udabas. Ah, Mars was one of Venus's many lovers. He was the god of war, and the father of Romulus and Remus, who founded Rome. That is why the Romans considered themselves sons of Mars. Perhaps I should try something else.
Well done. Finally. Grandpère would hide my birthday present, and I would follow puzzle after puzzle to finally get it. It's almost as though he were training me for this. Oh no, the police. I can't let them catch me now. I need to get inside that maze. That's how Grandfather used to get into the underground grotto, and I am almost certain that's where he would hide something important. I just wish I knew what it was. facing Venus like the smaller ones were. There, that should make Venus happy.
get into the underground grotto. Well, I would never come back after after what I saw grandfather doing down here. It was like a cult ceremony. How can I forgive him for being involved in something like that? No, I do not have time for remorse. I need to follow his dying clues something I have to see or get here. Though I better find some light if I want to see anything at all. one of those torches. That seems to have done the trick. That worked. This seems to be working. Princess Sophie, my grandpere promised me, and an address is engraved on the side. I don't need a symbologist to understand this, but grandpere wanted me to work with Robert. I bet I'll show this to him. Be the way out. Come the hell. I wish I understood why you did these things. I am so sorry. Find anything? The fleur de lis. What does it mean? It could mean your grandfather was more important than you know. We could write him. Yeah? Contre Haxo. What does it mean? It's an address. It's where we're heading now. What now?
Who's their decorator? Allied steel? Robert, try not to draw too much attention to us. Fash may have put our names all over the Interpol system by now. Bonsoir. How may I help you? Excusez-moi, but this key... Of course. To get to your viewing room, you must go through the left doorway in the atrium. Your key will give you access. Need a drink, badly. <laughs> Pardon me. Must have been the Mexican for lunch. Stay away. It almost seems too easy. Are you trying to jinx us? World? Grandfather didn't leave us a password. Are you certain? Well, I stopped opening the mail he would send me after the incident. I don't think he'd send something that sensitive through the mail. Although, maybe he did give us a password. Look at the symbol on the crate. It looks like the Greek letter Phi. The 21st letter of the Greek alphabet. But Phi is also a Greek numeral representing 500. We're still missing something. We need a four-digit number. Doesn't Phi also represent the golden ratio? The golden ratio? It is a mathematical thing, but the most important part is that the Fibonacci sequence conforms to the golden ratio. You've lost me. Compel used the Fibonacci sequence as the number for a safe where he kept his key. I think he used that there so I would remember it now. So you're saying the Fibonacci sequence relates to phi being the 21st letter of the alphabet and the numeral 500? Yes. So if 21, 500, and 521 were the first three numbers of a Fibonacci sequence, the next number would be four digits, which is exactly what we need for this password. What is it? A note from Grandpère. My dearest Sophie, you are reading this and I therefore have passed away. I do I hope, hope that we made that up. We made but up. If, not, but not if not, do not waste time grieving. You have much work to do, and time will be running out. You were always, always the light I followed. Now you, you must, must be, be strong, strong and, fearless. and fearless. I know you will not let me down. Do not forget what lies beneath the rose must remain your secret. Mon amour, grand-père. Is that... the keystone? No, this is a cryptex. 
grandfather probably made this. It's based off a design from Da Vinci's Secret Codex. How do you open it? Well, this one has five dials and each one has 26 possible letters. The possible permutations may as well be infinite, but more importantly, there's a vinegar glass vial at the center. If you try to force it open, that will crack and dissolve the papyrus message inside. So, you either know the answer, or you don't. You've seen this before, I take it. Grandfather used to make these for me. I had to solve them to find my birthday presents. What an ornate box. It's made of rosewood. My grandfather's favorite. You think Grandfather already left us a clue? In his note, he mentioned that what lies beneath the rose must remain our secret. Sabrosa. The Romans hung a rose over meetings to indicate the meeting was confidential. Attendees understood that whatever was said under the rose, or Sabrosa, had to remain a secret. Now, I noticed a small hole in the center of the rose in the box lid. The inner lid. It's probably false. If we can find something small enough to push through the hole, we might find a clue to opening the cryptex. Perfect. <sighs> that seems to have done the trick. Ah, there's something written on the inside of the lid. Good evening. I am André Vernet, president of the Bank of Zurich. We don't have much time, so I'll be brief. My front desk guard informs me that he has alerted Interpol of your presence. The French police are arriving as we speak. Fash is even more determined than I thought. I don't want any authorities to set foot in my bank, nor do my customers. We have enough controversy here over the rights of my clients as it is. I will guide you out of the bank using these earpieces. You will need this security card and truck key. Avoid the bank security. If you get caught, I cannot help you. I will be going to the bank surveillance center to help you out. However, at any time the authorities may request my attention. During that time, you will be on your own. Stay in this room until I get to the surveillance center. I will tell you when it's clear. I guess we better get ready to leave. Well done. Not all of the guards know to watch for you yet, but that is about to change. Bonsoir. Do not be seen again, or you will most likely be taken into custody. Understood. Must 
we need to find something we have missed. should come in useful. Oh well, I guess it was nothing. here. kind of people murder an old man in the museum? Who cares what they did? We had better get them out of the bank before the policemen ransack the place. That would put us out of business. Permanently. You must find your way to the system administrator's office. It is the only way out of here now. I must go. The police would like to have a word with me. Uh, did Song go? Take time soon.
annoying every time I see them. I sent in one of my lawyers to talk them in circles. That will keep them busy for quite a while. Now, insert your security card into the terminal attached to this computer. Log in with the password 867530 and your card will upgrade to security level 2. This will allow you to access the entrance at the office stairwell. Good. Vernet, the password you gave us didn't work. It would seem the system administrator has been changing the passwords regularly, as he should. To get the new password, you will need to go to the records room and find a file named Security System. The key to the cabinet that contains that file is located in the office manager's room. So good. Seems to be working.
on the guard. We must find another way through. There are air vents that go from the safety deposit box area into the server. Find them. Oh well, I guess it was nothing. Get away from him! You can't uh. hurt me. Leave him alone! Oh. We don't have to fight. Do not make me hurt you. You can file a workers' comp claim on me. Just give up already. Have you had enough? You should reconsider. Oh. Forcing my hand. He'll be all right. one of the vents that Vernet mentioned.
The guard post at the front contains the controls to open the door for the main security computer. Do not alert the guard to your presence, or there may be consequences. I'm getting tired. Something I am missing. Ha! It worked. Now for the next part. I've upgraded the card. I must go for now. The police have more questions for me. Your card will get you into the loading dock through the atrium room. Stay out of sight and get to dock 3. The key I gave you will open the security truck there. Good job, Sophie.
Would you really hit a lady? This looks useful. Why don't we just call it even? Leave her alone. Yeah. Don't make things worse. Better hide me before someone comes looking. These are friends, Remy. Uh, then, sir, I have other household matters to attend to. Very well. So, Robert, what brings you to the Chateau at this most unfortunate hour? Lee, we've come to talk to you about the Priory of Sion. The Keepers? So, this is indeed about the Grail. What is it you want to know? Well, first I'd like you to explain the true nature of the Grail to Miss Nauvoo. Robert, you've brought me a virgin? What? Virgin is the term Grail enthusiasts use to describe anyone who has never heard the true Grail story. I believe the lady here is in need of an education. How fortunate then that you've come to me. Only the worthy can find the Grail, Miss Nauvoo. The path to truth lies through the doors of my home. But they only unlock for the enlightened. He's a bit eccentric, but we're safe here. I know we can help us figure out the cryptex. Just play along for now. All right, Celty Bing. I will find the path. Welcome to the Arthurian Legend Room. If you would take notice, there are two wonderful paintings depicting the tales of Arthurian knights, and at the doors you will find the armors that they wore. The Arthurian knights had their own heraldry, which is displayed on the shields. You, Miss Nauvoo, must discern which shield goes with each painting by placing the appropriate shield with its armor. If you examine a shield, I should be more than happy to tell you that night's tale. This is Percival's shield. Sir Percival was one of the first knights to see the Grail. During his journeys, he came across the castle of the Fisher King, and in the sky above it saw an image of the Grail. Inside, he found that the Fisher King was quite ill and bedridden. But while Percival knelt beside him, a great procession walked down the hall. At the end of the procession, a lady carried a chalice, but Percival failed to inquire about it, and the King was not healed as a result. Percival vowed to find the Grail again someday, and became one of the three knights to embark on the final quest for the Holy Grail. My dear Sophie, this is the shield of Mordred. Mordred was King Arthur's son who was born of Arthur's half-sister Morgana. When Arthur and Gawain were away from the kingdom, Mordred seized the throne and took his father's wife, Guinevere, as his own. 
In the final battle over the kingdom, Mordred fatally wounded Arthur, but was then defeated by Lancelot. One story states Lancelot executed Guinevere, believing she had taken part in the usurpation of the throne willingly, and entombed Mordred with her dead body, which he ate to stay alive until he eventually died of starvation. This is the shield of Lancelot. Sir Lancelot was raised by Vivian, the Lady of the Lake. He was the epitome of chivalry and was always courteous, courageous, and kind. He became the first knight of the Round Table, but soon fell in love with Queen Guinevere. He slept with Guinevere behind Arthur's back, and when he did so, a broken shield that Vivian had given him became whole again. This is Galahad's shield. Sir Galahad was the son of Lancelot and became a knight of the Round Table. He saw a vision of angels guiding him to the Holy Grail. Thus, he was selected as one of the three knights who would go on a quest for it. When they found the final location of the Grail, Galahad was one of the few allowed to see it. Ah! This is the shield of King Arthur Pendragon. He became king when he pulled the sword Excalibur from a stone. Uther Pendragon, Arthur's father, was the previous owner of Excalibur. Before Uther died, he implanted the sword which he got from the Lady of the Lake into a stone and said that whoever could remove it would be king. Of course, only his own magical bloodline could do so. And thus, Arthur ruled over Britannia for many years. This is the shield of Sir Gawain. He was the most chivalrous of the knights and was bound by his honor to do what was right. He was the only knight brave enough to accept the challenge of the mighty Green Knight. Lancelot mistakenly slew Sir Gareth during a rescue of Guinevere thus causing a bitter rivalry to form between Lancelot and Gawain, who was Gareth's brother. Well done! Now, what of the other knight? He looks rather plain without his shield. Excellent, Miss Nevu. I trust the Arthurian legends are entertaining? Yes, I quite enjoyed your tales. Knights questing for the Holy Grail does make for an entertaining story. But I assure you that it is no mere cup. I know, sometimes it's a ball. <laughs> no, no, my dear. You see, as a Grail historian, I'm often asked, where is the Grail? It is rare that people ask me, what? is the Grail, because everyone assumes that it is just an object. It is much more than that. Now that you know the question, why don't we see what answers we can find here? I am missing something here.
I thought you said the glare was not a cup. It isn't, but as time progressed, the Holy Grail became Arthur's Grail. The legends were intertwined. And it was simply because poets and storytellers continually wrote about it and changed a few things here or there. So that's why the Grail became a cup? Not exactly. I'll explain more later. I need to move the tiles to form a picture. This is probably a passage from the Bible. That seems to have done the trick. entirely depends on your interpretation. Grail can mean many things. Are you familiar with the symbols for male and female? Of course. These are not the original symbols. These symbols originated as ancient astronomical symbols for the planet god Mars and the planet goddess Venus. The originals are far simpler. This is the symbol for male, the blade. Quite to the point. And this is the symbol for female, the chalice. Legend tells us the Holy Grail is a chalice, a cup. But the Grail's description as a chalice is actually an allegory to protect the true nature of the Holy Grail. You mean the Grail is a woman? Exactly. A 
woman who carried with her a secret so powerful that, if revealed, it threatened to devastate the very foundation of Christianity. Who is she? As I mentioned before, Da Vinci painted the true grail. Come to the dining room when you're ready, and I will show you Da Vinci's painting. You told me you had a Da Vinci painting that would show us the true grail? Indeed I do. I assume you recognize this? The Last Supper? Yes. Da Vinci painted many secrets within it. Perhaps you can use what we discussed earlier to find a few of them yourself. I will try. There is a V-shape right in the center between Jesus and John. Robert told me earlier that the V is an ancient symbol for the chalice. This is quite true, but why would Da Vinci paint a feminine symbol into the Last Supper? I don't know. It's a painting of 13 men. Is it? Take a closer look. Is that an actual image of the Grail? It's hard to say. It's almost an optical illusion, is it not? Did Da Vinci mean to say that there was a Grail Cup? Not at all. Since it's an illusory image, I would think he was saying quite the opposite. That the idea of the Grail as a cup is the fake story, and that the real story can be found elsewhere in the painting. It all goes back to the Sangria. I have never heard of it. Sure you have. You're just used to hearing it called the Holy Grail. Holy Grail is the literal meaning of Sangreal. The phrase derives from the French Sangral, which evolved to Sangreal and was eventually split into two words, Sangreal. Oh, does the world have anything to do with the French word sang, or Spanish sangre meaning blood? Oh yes, the Grail has much to do with blood, but not in the way you might think. Let's look over the painting some more. a woman. Surprise, surprise. It's no mistake either. Leonardo was skilled at painting the differences between the sexes, but our preconceived notions of the scene are so powerful that our mind blocks out the incongruity and overrides our eyes. Who is she? There are other clues within the painting that may reveal her name. Look again. It looks like an M between Jesus and that woman. A bit too perfect for coincidence, wouldn't you say? Why is it there? Countless Grail-related works contain the hidden letter M. As watermarks, underpaintings, or compositional illusions. Conspiracists will tell you it stands for matrimonial. You mean marriage? Jesus was married to this woman? Their marriage is part of the historical record. These are photocopies of the Nag Hammadi and Dead Sea Scrolls, the earliest Christian records. Troublingly, they do not match up with the Gospels in the Bible. The Gospel of Philip is always a good place to start. And the companion of the Savior is Mary Magdalene. Christ loved her more than all the disciples and used to kiss her often on her mouth. The rest of the disciples were offended by it and expressed disapproval. They said to him, Why do you love her more than all of us? Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene, the prostitute? <sighs> Magdalene was no such thing. That unfortunate misconception is the legacy of a smear campaign launched by the early church to cover up her role as the Holy Grail. The early church needed to convince the world that the mortal prophet Jesus was a divine being. Therefore, any Gospels that described earthly aspects of Jesus' life had to be omitted from the Bible. Like his marriage. I think we've got what we need to solve the cryptic, Sophie. There's more to find in Da Vinci's painting of the Last Supper, if you are interested, of course. 
Peter looks like he is threatening Mary. Peter was definitely one of Mary's detractors. After Jesus died and was reborn, there were many debates over who should continue his church. But Mary can tell you that in her own words. Here, read this passage from her gospel. And Peter said, Did the Savior really speak with a woman without our knowledge? Are we to turn about and all listen to her? Did he prefer her to us? And Levi answered, Peter, you have always been hot-tempered. Now I see you contending against the woman like an adversary. If the Savior made her worthy, who are you indeed to reject her? Surely the Savior knows her very well. That is why he loved her more than us. So Peter disliked her because Jesus favored Mary over him? Not only that, the stakes were far greater than mere affection. At this point in the Gospels, Jesus suspects he will soon be captured and crucified. So he gives Mary Magdalene instructions on how to carry on his church after he is gone. As a result, Peter expresses his discontent over playing second fiddle to a woman. I dare say Peter was something of a sexist. This is St. Peter, the rock upon which Jesus built his church. The same, except for one catch. According to these unaltered Gospels, it was not Peter to whom Christ gave directions with which to establish the Christian church. It was Mary Magdalene. You are saying the Christian church was to be carried on by a woman? That was the plan. Jesus was the original feminist. He intended for the future of his church to be in the hands of his wife. Earlier, you mentioned that the Sangreal documents told the true story of Christ. Ah, you remembered. Yes, but as we discussed before, Sangreal derives from San Graal, or Holy Grail. But in its most ancient form, the word Sangreal was divided in a different spot. Sangreal. Which translates to royal blood. Precisely. But whose blood? Christ's? I believe there's at least one more clue to be had in the Last Supper. Mary seems to have nearly as much attention from the Apostles as Jesus. I should hope so. She was a very important woman. Few people realize that Mary Magdalene, in addition to being Christ's right hand, was a powerful woman already. I was under the impression that Magdalene was poor. Just as many people think Jesus was poor. Yet he was of the house of David, descendant of King Solomon, king of the Jews. Mary was of the house of Benjamin, also of royal descent. Magdalene was recast as a whore to erase her powerful bloodlines. But why should the early church care if Magdalene had royal blood? My dear child, it was not Mary Magdalene's royal blood that concerned the church so much as it was her consorting with Christ. By marrying into the powerful house of Benjamin, Jesus fused two royal bloodlines, creating a potent political union with the potential of making a legitimate claim to the throne and restoring the line of kings as it was under Solomon. The legend of the Holy Grail is a legend about royal blood. Grail legend speaks of the chalice that held the blood of Christ. It speaks, in fact, of Mary Magdalene, the female womb that carried Jesus' royal bloodline. But how could Christ have a bloodline unless... Unless they had a child. Behold the greatest cover-up in human history. Not only was Jesus Christ married, but he was a father. My dear, Mary Magdalene was the holy vessel. She was the chalice that bore the royal bloodline of Jesus Christ. She was the womb that bore the lineage and the vine from which the sacred fruit sprang forth. Then there must be some way to trace the family line. Precisely what the Priory of Sion has been keeping secret for hundreds of years. Sophie, your grandfather may have been the last man to know the secret lineage of Jesus Christ's bloodline. Is that why he was killed? We may never know exactly why someone would murder your grandfather in cold blood.
you heal. Give the cryptex to me. Quickly, to the basement. The basement? It has a safe room. killed Sister Sandrine. Obviously, he's interested in you now, and he specifically wants the cryptex. This won't do at all. Is there a way out of here that doesn't go through him? Well, if he's found you here, he obviously is resourceful. Someone will have to go up there and knock him out. I'll do it. Don't be ridiculous. You are in no condition to fight that monster. I doubt very much you could knock him unconscious, Miss Naboo. I'm afraid she's right, Robert. Perhaps if we had some sort of weapon. Ah, yes. What? Do you have a gun? I'm a good shot with a pistol. No, nothing quite so barbaric. Take a look at this. Da Vinci's drawing of a ballista? You don't have one, do you? I'm afraid I don't have all of one, but I do have the frame right here. What good is that if it does not work? Well, it occurred to me that we might be able to make it work with some of the artifacts I have upstairs. Remy is something of an engineer in his spare time. Will be true. What do you have upstairs that would make it work? Why, the other pieces of the ballista. There are unique properties to each piece, and I was studying them in different rooms of the house. They are, most unfortunately, scattered about and quite heavy. Then I will get them for us. That's very brave, Sophie, but I really think I should go with you. If you insist, Robert, but let me handle moving the large pieces. A good gust of wind could blow you over right now. If you insist, my lady. Miss Naboo, do be careful. I doubt very much that Robert will be more than a distraction for this giant of a man, but Robert does have the cryptex, and that's the only thing this lunatic seems to want. If Robert should get into trouble, use a mace or a fire poker. Whatever you can find to stop that monster from killing Mr. Langdon. We still need him if we want to find out where the cryptex leads. Don't worry. I won't leave Robert to die. We'll get through this, Sir TB. I mean, Sir B. Together, or not at all? Sophie, let's go. I don't see him out there. worked for Tibing. My employment does not require me to answer personal questions. If you need some tea or cakes, I would be happy to fetch them for you. Remy, I was wondering... Why? Why are you bothering me? You obviously do not need any of my services. Never mind. Before you ask whatever inane question you are going to ask, think to yourself, Am I requesting a service of the butler? If the answer is no, please do keep your mouth shut. Bane only cleanses my soul. 
am warning you, I am an agent of the judicial police and... Die! Seem God's hand is fallible. It's going to take a lot more than that to stop him. Let's get this ballista piece to the elevator. You just don't give up, do you? You will not displace our faith. God's hands are upon you, heathens. Like you displaced Sister Sandrine? Is life not sacred to your religion? She was working against God. She scorned the work of Manu's day, as did the Seneschal and that lying worm they called their Grandmaster. No! You! Sophie, I'm sorry. Let's get this ballista piece to the elevator. That monster's rage is endless. about a teacher. Someone told this man to kill my grandfather. We must find out who. That bookcase isn't going to stop him. Let's get the last piece of the ballista into the elevator. Of course. My dear boy, are you and the classics such strangers to each other? Heraclius? The round? Oh, come on. Of course. The temple church. But how do we get... My dear lady, I have a plane fueled and waiting. What about him? Mm, bring him with us. He's the best lead we have. Oh, the landing speed, taxi to the control tower and stop. Repeat. Land and stop by the control tower. British police have requested a full search of the aircraft. Have a good bigger hill. On final approach now. Wait for a 
us by the main gates. Of course, old boy. Noblesse of news. Problem, officer? We need to stop the police from coming through this door. There's got to be something we can block it with. should stop the police from getting through, for now. Inside the storage cage, if we move the container. somewhere. You must have missed something. Let's explore a little more.
next part. Somehow a padlock just doesn't make me feel secure anymore. This should come in useful. Robert Langdon, Sophie Nauvoo, give yourselves up now. Jacobs, you take some men and cover the airfield exit. Silver, set up an outer perimeter and checkpoints on the roads in a mile radius. Parde, get a couple of K-9 units into the tunnels. We need these two cornered, cuffed and on a plane within the hour, or the Commissioner will have our hides. You heard the Chief Inspector. Get a move on you, git! That doesn't sound promising. Where are we going, Robert? We need to get to Teeping's limo outside the airfield. You don't really know where we are, do you? Well, other than being an airfield, no. But if we keep moving forward, we'll find a way out. This door should take us to the surface. It doesn't seem to be working. The power indicator is off. There must be some sort of electrical problem. It doesn't seem to do anything. I think it just needs some power.
I knew it would work. It's a fuse box with working fuses. Fuses in this fuse box look fine. This is the fuse box from that schematic we saw. Hmm, some of the fuses are missing. Heraklios did consecrate this place, where knights of old lay down to show their faith. It looks like we'll have to look around the temple church to find the next cryptex word. We need to get out of here first.
Look, there's T-Bing's limo. We need a distraction if we're going to get by all those police. Look at that fuel tank. That would make a huge explosion. Huh, man. It's a distraction. Fine, but first we need to start the main generator or we won't be able to open those doors. Right, the fuse box. These fuses look like they're working properly. Knocked him out cold. The generator's not on. I'm sure I got it right. There must be something else.
Did you really hit a lady? Perfect. I just need to hit that fuel puddle from the gas tanker with this flare, but I better throw it from the roof. Yeah, a bit drafty here, isn't it? Go! Now, nah, Remy, Temple Church. Don't spare the horses. I strongly suggest we sort out the matter of the cryptex before proceeding. That would seem reasonable, but... I don't think we can get any further without solving it. Yes, I have to concur. Sophie, my dear, why do you hesitate?
I don't think we can get any further without solving it. Yes, I have to concur. Sophie, my dear, why do you hesitate? Outdoors, the graceful waters you. Obviously, it's trying to point us toward the fountain in the church garden, but the mention of knights of old. Perhaps it's talking about the Knights Templar. Right. You and I should have a look round the inside. We'll leave the outside to Sophie. Does Sophie get a say in this? Would you prefer the other way round, then? No, no, mon dieu. I'll search the outside. Be careful, though, both of you. Someone left a key in here. I wonder what this is for. It's locked. Maybe there's a key somewhere. Remember, do not harm them. But the cripple, the professor, and the woman all need to be rounded up as fast as humanly possible. Don't you worry, chum. We'll have them wrapped up tight in no time. Fine. You two come with me. You two, secure the perimeter. Report anything suspicious. No problem. Got it. This has never worked right. Say again. Oh, no. Say again. They're here. This should be useful. Judge this! When this is 
over is tequilas and senoritas for me. talking about? Well, that stuffy professor guy wouldn't talk about the girl. Yeah? yeah so I pull the old pliers out and I say, I'm going to remove some teeth if you don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Yeah, but that Remy says, I'm not allowed to rough him up. What the hell? Why not? Well, I don't know. He just said no. And he pays the bill, so I can't argue. Blimey, that's a right shame, that is. I know. I just bought these shiny new pliers too. Oh, it's a damn shame. I suppose. I need to cut these back. There's something here. I need to... This seems to be working. In honor of Jacques Chaunier, without his contributions, the underground renovations on the courtyard's infamous Pillar Knights could not have been completed. Ah, Pompeo's power ring works here as well. I must be missing something. shard with strange symbols on it. What could this be for? The night monument in the courtyard. Something is there. I need to investigate. Oh. 
That's gonna leave a mark. No rest for the wicked. I've gotta get out of here. Sophie. Hey, mate. What are you up to in there? Oh, I wouldn't get any funny ideas if I were you. I've got a really nice pair of pliers just screaming to be put to use. Do you know what I mean? That's right. You just stay quiet like a good little quiet boy. Oh, you bore me. Let's see if there's anything good on the telly. This isn't important. I don't think this is relevant. I can ignore this. This isn't what I'm looking for. No, that's not really important. I bet I could use this for something. I'm not looking for this. There are several things I'm looking for, but this isn't one of them. This piece of cardboard could be useful. I'm wasting my time with this. There's really nothing relevant about The door must be locked. It won't open. I can't see through the keyhole. There must be something blocking my view. There's enough space under the door to slide something thin through. Stay quiet if I want to get out of here without alerting that goon. <laughs> this show's hilarious! I suppose 20 to 1 on the third race. Nah, that's a punter's bet. This should come in useful. Have it your way! This gearbox looks like it might open something. I'll take a long holiday. Sector clear, over.
A gear. I'll need this for the gearbox. I never tell you about my crazy look in East Park the other day. I heard about East Park on the news, but no, you haven't told me. How'd you get wrapped up in that? Well, there I was on the corner of East and Main, minding my own business, you know, as I'm apt to do. Yeah, right. When all of a sudden, three fellas in ski masks brandishing AK-47s come running by, holding huge bags of cash. They rob a bank or something? Did I stutter? They were holding huge bags of cash, wearing ski masks and wielding AK-47s. Well, obviously they just finished up a nice game of cricket and were running home to their mums for brunch. Yes, they robbed a bank, you twit. So what did you do? So, I seized them running to me, and I knew the police were hot on their tail. And so I says to the first one, Hey, come this way, I know a good hiding place. I'll lead them to the sewer pipe, you know the place, and I tell them they'll be safe there until they're low for a minute. And? So, <laughs> these chumps are so relieved that they all remove their masks, drop their AKs on the ground, like, you know, I'm their new best friend. It, well, and I was for 30 seconds. What do you mean? Well, as soon as those fools had dropped their guard, I grab the first one's AK and demand they pile up the money in my car. You got some balls, you do. <laughs> Jab right and watch more. They knew I want a bloke to mess with. So they did it straight. Then I drove off with their guns, their money, and their identity, should they ever grow a pair and decide to come after me. You are a right bastard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Great, another gear. This gear should fit in the gearbox. There we go. Look! The door! Do you see that? That bloody door wasn't open before! Look, just simmer down, will you? There's a rational explanation for all this. Rational, my bleeding ass! You have a look! Ah, uh, someone opened that door. 
The Melsonelli doesn't seem too happy about it. It must be Robert. This is not bloody good, I warned you I did. Shut it. This is position one calling. We've got a situation here. Over. Affirmative, what is your situation? Bastard got out of the prison cell. Are you serious? What? You think I'm clowning about making up random stuff while I'm on a paying job? Right. Attention everyone. Clowning McBurney. Butterfingers has let Robert Langdon out of his cage. Be on the lookout for a stuffy-looking English professor with a big sloppy grin on his face, cos he's just outsmarted us. I've got your number. I can hear you breathing. Robert, thank God. It's all right, Sophie. I'm fine. Teabing, though. What has happened to him? Remy has taken him hostage. They're going to use him to bargain for the Cryptex. If we can solve it before they do, then we'll have more to bargain with. Have you found anything? Yes. Yes, I found something. An inscription on the fountain and another key. First things first. Give me a hand. Together we can open these heavy doors. Hey, over. Come here. We need to stick together if we're going to find them me. down here. It is rather dark. Well, why aren't the lights working down here? Try the light switch, you idiot. Light switch? What are you... We're in a sewer, you twit. The only thing even remotely easy to use are the controls for those gates. More trouble. There's a veritable army down there. Tweedledee and Tweedledummer, let's be as quiet as possible. We don't want them on to us. Just checking in. Trying to be professional-like. Forcing my hand. Perhaps you should step aside. <laughs> just too slow. Eight sewers. Why are we even down here? If you were running away from a church filled with bloodthirsty mercenaries, present company included, would you run into the sewer beneath said church? Yeah, well, if I were a rat, I might. Well, for the purposes of this conversation, assume you're a human being. No, 
I most definitely would not walk into a smelly, dank, disgusting sewer if I were trying to get away from a bunch of bloodthirsty buggers like us. Unless... Unless what? Unless there was something really important down in the sewers. Like what? Your most favourite turd clump? Well, I don't know, maybe a, a wedding ring or something. Those two did not strike me as the married type. They were so stiff you could shove popsicle sticks up their rears and use them as marionettes. Lovely image. Thank you for that mental mind warping, you insidious bastard. I'm just saying, ain't I? They don't strike me as the married type. Look, maybe we should just do our jobs and watch these tunnels like the boss said. Fair enough. Have you had enough? You made a wrong turn back there. We 
Julie hit a lady. Forcing my hand. Get away from him! Another clue. The Templar were amazing architects. Let's see. A plaque. There's an inscription. For the Knights Templar, unfairly burned for claims of devil worship later proven false. May their shattered shield and reputation one day be reforged. Over here. It looks like something is missing. Fascinating. I think we need to search around some more. This isn't working. Nice. I just need to keep it up. That did it. Ah, yes. We need to orientate them a certain way. Which way, Robert? You're the professor. Which way do we tell them? Well done. The structure of the pillar goes all the way up out of the sewer into the courtyard. It must be part of the Templar pillar. That would make sense. The dedication on the fountain did mention it. Yeah. I knew a degree in symbology would come in handy someday. Do not make me hurt you. Let's go!
Hello then. How did you end up like that then? I'll fight if I have to. You're really chasing me off now. to enjoy every moment of this. I think that's enough. I can and will defend myself. Stay away from her. Be all right. Those bells on a lot. We've got the metal shards. Let's get back to the shield. Why, what are you thinking, Robert? I've got an idea. <sighs> Robert. The shield, Sophie. We can use them on the shield. Say again. Say again. Don't make this difficult. You must have a lot of bottles to face me. Robert! Help! I think it would be best if you would let me go. out of sight.
Well, here's one piece of the puzzle. It's well, some sort of here's cipher. one piece of the puzzle. We just need something to decipher. I've seen these symbols before. Well. I do study symbols for a living, Sophie. Now, let's see. Clues to solving the grid? Of course. Question is, how? The symbols along the top and sides seem familiar. I think we have the information we need to solve the cryptech, Sophie. It seems pretty clear, yes. What does the cliptic scroll say? In London lies a knight, a pope interred. His labor's fruit, a holy wrath incurred. <sighs> Dead people in London. That could be anywhere. I think we've all had quite enough of this running about. I'm too old. Give me the cryptex, and you might just walk from this. Really? Like the curator? You have no place to run, Dr. Langdon. You're a wanted man. Make it easy for yourself. And our beautiful Mademoiselle Nouveau. I'm touched by your concern, Remy. But I think we will have to decline. I am afraid no matter what you might believe, this belongs to me. on my side, and now your fate is sealed. struggle and beg for forgiveness for your treachery against heaven. <clears throat> Doom has come upon you. There is no way to go. You better get faster with this or I'm not gonna make it. Fall to your knees. Beg for the forgiveness of God. 
stop your hand off. Yes. Who's pathetic now? Filthy murderer. All mercenaries report to Westminster Abbey. Remy's orders. They must be holding TV in at Westminster. Let's go. This way. We don't have much time. Will they kill him? You can bet on it. Just as soon as he solves the clue. There's Remy. And there he goes. Should we follow him? I don't think so. He has the advantage now. What we need is some leverage. He may have the clip decks, but I don't think he can solve it without us. The question is, will T-Bing be able to solve it without us? If he does, they will kill him. We'll have to solve it first. If we have the answer, we can trade it for T-Bing and hopefully get all of us out of here alive. Let's go over the score once more. In London lies a knight, a pope interred. His labor's fruit, a holy wrath incurred. As I recall, Sir Isaac Newton's burial was attended by kings and nobles, presided over by Alexander Pope, his friend and colleague, who gave a stirring eulogy before sprinkling dirt on the tomb. Alexander Pope? A pope. It's perfect. Newton is our knight. Huh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Curious. Fascinating. monument to Shakespeare is missing. The sign says that it has been moved to the renovation room for restoration. The they must have missed something. Let's explore a little more. If I push that work light into the water, it would probably zap that guard. A makeshift taser. The 
This is it, the tomb of Sir Isaac Newton. What does the next part of the cryptic scroll say? Look at the controversy he has stirred. This child's son is key to find the world. Interesting. The reclining figure is Newton, and those angels are holding a mathematical formula. Is that an orb above them? That's a celestial orb resting in a pyramid at the top. It has the signs of the zodiac on it. Who is that on top of the orb? That's a figure representing the science of astronomy. A telescope is used to view the planets and stars. Newton probably used one to make many of his observations. A prism is used to diffract light into different colors. To be honest, I don't know much about it. This shows the arrangement of the planets. It's the sun. Like in the poem. There must be something. Ah. There's a depression under here. And it looks like there's a fleur-de-lis symbol. What's it for? It's hard to say. But there's a small circular hole as well. Nice job, Professor. Look, it's come loose. There must be something more to it. What do we do now? Something happened. I'm just not sure what. There's a scroll inside. What does it say? It looks like a series of five separate poems, possibly riddles. Grandpère would have put them in the order we needed to read them. Well, assuming Seigneur did write them, it doesn't hurt to start at the top. You know it was Chaucer that essentially made English the standard language among the upper class in London? Before his poems, they mostly spoke French and Latin. Grandpère loved all poetry, as you can tell by the poems that lead us to here. Right. Let's look at that poem again. Clockwise around the shield stops the name of he who can absolve your sin and shame. It's Latin. The translations... It reads, Of old the bard who struck the noblest strains, Great Geoffrey Chaucer now this tomb retains. If for the period of his life you call, The signs are under that will note you all. In the year of our Lord, 1400, on the 25th of October, Death is the repose of cares. N. Brigham charged himself with these in the name of the Muses, 1556. It's Latin. Sophie, you'd like Chaucer's story, The Wife of Bath's Tale. Would I? In Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, one of the stories was told by a knight. A knight in those days was not unlike the Arthurian legends, but perhaps a little more mercenary and a little less chivalrous.
prioress was a nun in charge of a priory. There's also a story about a partner in the Canterbury Tales. A partner is someone who would absolve people of sin for a fee. So only the rich went to heaven? Sometimes they ended up very poor. Unfortunately, it was usually the poor who would pay. In the story, the partner's prologue goes into detail about the partnering business. It looks like something might go on top of this shield. Perhaps it turns. It won't move on its own. It looks like these letters can be moved around now. Moved around to make what though? We got it. What's this? It looks like a ring, but it's too large to fit on a normal person's finger. Is it mentioned in the next poem? Let's see. Though many tried his words to find the rose, in I am's writ, this man of loves and woes, a word you'll find that lies within the prose, which here denoted grants a ring repose. might be useful later. No, this isn't it. That won't work. This rope is connected to that light overhead. I could probably untie it and drop it on someone. There's someone over in this direction. This should come in useful. this light, I could probably distract one of those guards. Just checking what in, in blazes? Who's flipping the lights on? Slippery 
three back. Just give up already. Distract a mercenary by flipping this light on. Stay where you are. Who's playing with the lights? I think that's enough. This looks useful. I think this controls the power to the renovation room. That should cast some light on the situation. I cannot believe you just said that. I think the switch is this way. That's not what I'm looking for. No, this isn't it. That won't work. still can't make it out. It's covered in mildew. We'll have to clean it somehow. Look, there's an empty can of cleaning solution on the ground. Maybe if we find more, we can fix it.
Nice. I just need to keep it up. That's not what I'm looking for. No, this isn't it. That won't work. That's not what I'm looking for. No, this isn't it. That won't work. That's not what I'm looking for. It's a marble cleaning solution. That's exactly... Back to Acme, I think I'll take a long holiday. Now we can get that grime off the Shakespeare Monument. Now I can read it. It looks like a quote from the Tempest. What does it say? The cloud cup towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself. Yea, all which it inherit shall disillue, and like the baseless fabric of a vision, leave not a wreck behind. Hmm. Huh. There's something strange about it. There's an odd clean spot around the finger. All right, that worked. It fits perfectly. Look, it opened something up. What's inside? What's this for? Let's look at the next poem. The first child king of England made this place where now he rests inside Confessor's grace. The bard's denoted words will help you find a way to help release a king of kind. Good. There's some writing here. It says William. As in Shakespeare? As in the creator of this tomb. Or maybe both, knowing Sonier. Let's look at the poem again. The bald's denoted world will help you find a way to help release a king of kind. So far, every previous tomb has given us something for the next one. Good point. <laughs> the 
knew it would work. Looks like a small tile piece with a crown on it. It could be a king's crown, which would match what the poem told us. What does the next poem say? The cousin of the Queen Elizabeth. In Somerset, the Baron lost his breath. His mother with a soldier ran away, but not before the night had made her day. That's a lot of people. Yes, but in keeping with the previous poems, only one of them is a central figure. There are tiles with symbols on them. I know, and it looks like one of the tiles is missing. There's definitely a piece missing here. The smaller crown here would probably represent the queen. A full helmet with a feather is most likely to represent a knight. The pile of coins could mean a ransom or merchant. A Christian cross could represent the church or a priest. This crown here is a coronet. You can tell by the eight circles on it. These are worn by barons. The weapon on this one is a glaive, which would be used by a medieval foot soldier or possibly a mercenary. Oh. Huh. Hmm. I see. Interesting. Mm-hmm. The loot and quill would be a bard's tools. Perfect! this? I don't know. It reminds me a little of the shield on Chaucer's tomb. 
Let's read the last poem. Think back on all you have now observed, and find the knight with whom you first conferred. He seeks the orb that ought to be on his tomb, but only if the seed lies in its womb. Conscious. A call for backup. There's a hole in the back here, as though something might fit in there. It fits perfectly. Did you hear that? Look, a drawer slid out. There's a scroll inside, but it looks like it's missing half. The spinal puzzle will reveal the word that frees you from the losses you incurred. But where's the other half? It fits perfectly. So strange a message, though. Reading it out loud sometimes helps. This final puzzle will reveal the word that frees you from the losses you incurred. Your family reunion is at hand. See through the picture and you'll understand. Family reunion? Robert, everyone in my family is dead but me. That'd be a very disturbing reunion. But I think your grandfather may have had something else in mind. Look, these tiles were meant to go on top of the completed scroll. Ah, you're right. Let us see what picture the tiles form.
is a church. Robert, look, there are holes in the tiles. You can see letters through them. P A Y E N S. Payans is the final password for the cryptex, and Huda Payans founded the Knights Templar, which means that this must be a Templar church in the picture. Now what do we do? We can use this to get T-Bing back. But Robert, anyone vile enough to threaten someone's life like this does not deserve to know the secret of the Grail. I don't think we have much of a choice at this point. T-Bing is my friend. Our friend. If anything should happen to him, that is quite enough. I am afraid you two are very overdue. Remy. Overdue for what? Ah, I believe I am the one with the power here. My gun will point you in the proper direction to move your feet. Go! You, wait here. Be it yours or hers, I suggest you not move. I hope you did not think I did this all by myself. What? What do you mean? Remy, I am afraid your services are no longer needed. <gasps> Teacher! Please believe I never had any intention of your being involved. You came to my home. You came searching for me. Wait, what the hell are you doing? We thought you were in trouble. We came here to help you. As I trusted you. We have much to discuss. Let Sophie leave. You and I can discuss this alone. I have given you the cryptex as a show of good faith. And I'm afraid that is all that I can afford to give you. You couldn't solve it. I am afraid not, Robert. I need your help. Maybe I can distract T.B. long enough for Robert to think of something. T.B. is the type of person who hates having his own worlds used against him. I thought you told us that only the wealthy can find the Glail. Let's see if we can solve the cryptex. What? How dare you say such a thing? And you know that the Grail is my life's work. My life's work! But for your grandfather being too cowardly to release the truth to the world, we wouldn't be in this position now. But here we are. And Robert, you must make your decision. What can you possibly hope to gain through this? Why, Langdon, the one thing that I have always wanted the most. To release the Sangrial documents to the public as they were always intended to be by the Priory. If the Priory wanted to release the documents, Sonier would have done so. Ah, but I discovered a terrible truth. The reason the documents were not released at the beginning of the new millennium. At the ultimate moment of truth, Jacques Sonier changed his mind. So you blame Sonier because the Sangrial documents were never released? Wait. If T-Bing is behind everything, then Grandpère's death. T-Bing played all of this out. He is the one responsible for Grandpère. You are the one responsible for my grandfather's murder. This seems to be working. Your grandfather failed the Priory, the Grail, and the memory of all the generations that had worked to make that moment possible. The man honored with the greatest responsibility in Christian history eschewed his duty. His seneschal were traitors to the Grail. He was also under the thumb of the Church, and that ultimately is why I had to put his mind at rest and complete his duties for him. What could the church possibly have over Sonier? The church has 2,000 years of experience pressuring those who threaten to unveil its lies. Since the days of Constantine, the church has successfully hidden the truth about Mary Magdalene and Jesus. We should not be surprised that now, once again, they have found a way to keep the world in the dark. 
church may no longer employ crusaders to slaughter non-believers, but their influence is no less persuasive, no less insidious. Employing crusaders persuasive influence insidious. He's not just describing the church. Is he a complete hypocrite? He has done everything that he says he hates the church for. You are no better than the church. What are you talking about? You manipulated Silas and Remy into working for you. You sent them to murder people who did not believe as you did. But everything I did was to expose the truth. It doesn't matter if you become exactly like the very thing you despise. Oh, no, my dear. You have no idea of what you speak. Perhaps I can illustrate my point with something you've been wondering about since you were old enough to think. Miss Navu, for some time now, your grandfather has wanted to tell you the truth about your family. How could you know that? My methods are immaterial. The important thing for you to grasp right now is this. The deaths of your mother, father, grandmother and brother were not accidental. What are you saying? Robert, it explains everything. All the pieces fit. History repeats itself. The church has a precedent of murder when it comes to silencing the Sangria. With the end of days imminent, killing the Grand Master's loved ones sent a very clear message. Be quiet. You and Sophie are next. These are just theories, but there is one murder to be blamed. Even if the judge did murder my parents, he is no better. And now you have taken over where the judge has left off. What do you mean? You have no proof about what happened to my parents. But now we do know one truth. It was you who murdered my grandfather. It was his own fault. He and his seneschal lied to Silas. Otherwise, I would have obtained the keystone without complication. How was I to imagine the Grand Master would go to such ends to deceive me? and bequeath the keystone to an estranged granddaughter. Someone so unqualified to hold this knowledge that she required a symbologist babysitter. So it was you the entire time? One way or another, the keystone was coming to Chateau Villette. Silas was supposed to steal it from you there, thus removing you from the equation without hurting you and exonerating me from any suspicion of complicity. However, when I saw the intricacy of Sonier's codes, I decided to include you both in my quest a bit longer. I could have Silas steal the keystone later, once I knew enough to carry on alone. The Temple Church. But you still need a scapegoat. Someone to blame for the murders that lead to the miraculous recovery of the Sangreal documents. I am afraid that Silas served his purpose all too well. As we speak, he is no doubt under the arrest of the police, and he is a well-known member of Manor's Day. Listen. Can you hear it? The Grail is speaking to us across the centuries. She's begging to be saved from the Priory's folly. I implore you both to recognize this opportunity. We need to swear an oath together, a pledge of faith to one another a knight's allegiance to uncover the truth and make it known. I will never swear an oath with my grandfather's murderer, except an oath that I will see you go to prison. I am sorry you feel that way, mademoiselle. And you, Robert, you with me or against me? I know how to find the answer. Let Sophie go and we'll figure it out together at Newton's tone. I am not going anywhere. That cryptics was given to me by my grandfather. It is not yours to open. Sophie, please. You're in danger. I'm trying to help you. Robert! My grandfather would prefer his secret lost forever than see it in the hands of his murderer. Shoot me if you have to. I am not leaving my grandfather's legacy in your hands. Very well. No, Lee. If you even think about it, I will drop this. That bluff won't work on me. I know you better than that. Do you, Lee? I am a lone knight, surrounded by unworthy souls. Very well, show of faith. Set the cryptex down. They'll shoot us both as soon as I do. I have to protect Sophie and the Grail.
Justin! The old one! The Grail! Don't you understand? The Holy Grail! It's lost! Lost forever! It was nearly over, but there was one final scroll, one last rhyme to lead us to the ultimate answer. The Holy Grail beneath ancient Roslyn waits. Adorned in Master's loving art she lies. She rests at last beneath the starry skies. Ah, the artistry, the stained glass. Oh, it is achingly beautiful. The Holy Grail beneath ancient Roslyn waits. Well, we're here. What's next? The next line says the blade and chalice guarding over her gates. So I guess we look for the symbols of the blade and chalice. The angel's banner is inscribed with the word courage. The angel's banner is inscribed with the word faith. The angel's banner is inscribed with the word truth. The angel's banner is inscribed with the word hope. The scuff marks on the floor indicate this chest was moved around. This is the daisy. It looks like there is something behind the curtains. <laughs> I cannot make this out. I need more light. That worked. It's Latin. It says, wine is strong, the king is stronger. Women are even stronger. Truth conquers all. I think there is something behind these curtains. Something is missing from this. I should look around. Perfect. Now I have the lily.
What was it that the Latin inscription said about truth? That truth conquers all. Then there must be something special about this angel. Lift me up. Let's see what we can find. Now I have the rose. I think I have been here before. A very long time ago. There is a story that states that the master mason of Rosalind, who planned to carve this pillar, traveled to Rome for inspiration on the design. In his absence, his apprentice, having received a vision of the finished pillar in a dream, began carving the pillar immediately and created the design as it now stands. This pillar is hailed as a perfect marvel of craftsmanship. When the master mason returned and witnessed the carved masterpiece, the master was so struck with envy that he demanded to know who had dared to carve the pillar in his absence. Upon being told it was his own apprentice, the master mason was so overcome with rage that he bludgeoned his apprentice to death with a mallet. This is the journeyman pillar. This pillar stands between the pillars that represent Boaz and Joachim, according to Masonic architecture. That's odd. According to Masonic ceremony, this should be the location of the Apprentice Pillar. symbol for male and female fused together as one the perfect union of male and female Solomon's seal marking the holy of holies Did it. Nowhere to go but down from here. After you, my lady. Translated, it says, visit the center of the earth, and by rectifying, you shall find the hidden stone. Where did we see an earth earlier? It's a globe of the Earth. That's strange. 
Where Scotland, England and Wales should be, there is nothing but an indentation similar to the shape of those countries. Why would they be missing from this globe? I recently read that in 1999, this carving mysteriously began to produce presumably rust-stained water. The running stain resembles a bleeding wound on the right side of the angel's forehead. The angel has a piece of the globe. It looks like an island of some sort. Opened. There's another piece inside. There's a star on this medallion. That looks like a star to me. That seems to have done the trick. Did you hear that? It sounds like we might be able to lift that trap door after all. That seems out of place here. She was here. A sarcophagus? Mary Magdalene. The Holy Grail. Where did she go? Did the church finally get her? What was it about, Sophie? When you and your grandfather fought? Was it something about your past? Was it something about how your parents died? How could you know that? This article says the entire family was killed. Father, mother, and both children? A boy and a girl. Only their name is in Neveu. It's Sinclair. This makes no sense.
St. Clair is one of the oldest families in France. This traces their lineage back to a line of Merovingian kings. Only two direct lines of Merovingians remain. The Plantard family traces back to the descendants of the Merovingian kings. Sophie, I was wrong. Sonier didn't want you to guard the secret of the Holy Grail. Sophie, you are the secret. No. You survived the car accident. If it even was an accident. The Priory found out. They must have concealed the fact that you weren't dead. It's not possible. You are the heir. The end of the royal bloodline. The living descendant of Jesus Christ. No. It all makes sense. Your grandfather wasn't playing games with you as a child. He was training you, teaching you, so that you could take over and continue to guard the secret of the royal bloodline. Your own secret. Your blood. And he couldn't just tell you who you were. You would never believe him. Even now, after all that you've seen and learned, you still doubt it. Sophie, it is true. I gave you up once, knowing that I might never see you again. And I have prayed for this moment for a very long time. I am your grandmother, Sophie. Both of your parents were descended from Merovingian families. For protection, they changed their names of Plantard and St. Clair. Protection? From what? There are many who would kill to protect their belief in Christ's divinity. To learn that he not only had children, but that there are people still alive who carry his blood. It would be too much for some to comprehend. I've seen a lot of religious zealotry in the past day or two. But no one seemed to have much interest in tracking down and killing the descendants of Christ. Nevertheless, there are those who would murder to maintain their belief that the Bible is perfect and that Jesus had no children or even a wife. Sophie, I know that you have always wondered what happened to your parents. Your parents were killed in a car accident whose cause could not be determined. The Priory feared the identity of the royal line had been discovered. Your grandfather and I had to make a grave decision the instant we received the phone call. Your grandfather took you to France, and I moved here to watch over Roslyn with your baby brother. Separating the family was the hardest thing we ever had to do. But we did it, knowing that it was the only way to you safe. Welcome home, Princess. My husband obviously trusted you, Mr. Langdon, and so shall I. Considering what you've done for me tonight, and as curator of the Rosalind Trust, I can tell you for certain that the Grail is no longer here. But the words say the Holy Grail beneath ancient Rosalind waits. One of the Priory's most ancient churches was one day to return the Grail to her homeland of France, where she could rest for eternity. When my husband became Grand Master, his first duty was to restore her honor by returning her to France and building her a resting place fit for a queen. But the poem says... Why does it point to Rosalind? Perhaps you've misread its meaning. The grail can be deceptive. As could my late husband. Sophie, I should go. You should spend some time with your family. Thank you. For what? For bringing me here. For letting him choose you. 
So, what else? I'll always be there for you if you need me, Sophie. I know. It had been the most extraordinary two days of my life. And now I was back in Paris as if nothing had happened. But everything had changed. And suddenly, I understood Samir's message at last. The Holy Grail beneath ancient Roslyn waits. Adorned in Master's loving art, she lies. She rests at last. Starry skies.